You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So how can this season help Syracuse in recruiting? Okay, that is the main question that we are going to try to answer right now together. Syracuse, in the class of 2025, has the 41st ranked recruiting class in the country, and it is ninth in the ACC. Heading into this year, 2024, Syracuse had the 37th ranked recruiting class, which was eighth in the ACC. And to summarize what I was saying all offseason about their recruiting, just to give it a little bit more context for you, this is the best Syracuse has done recruiting-wise in football in over two decades. And the best part about it is they did this recruiting without playing a down. Seriously, they did it without playing a down. Fran Brown comes over in December of 2023, brings over a good number of players for the class of 2024, and obviously he's been recruiting 2025 and 2026 before Syracuse played a snap. They already have 28 commits in the class of 2025, and those 28 commits, I'm pretty sure, all came before the football season started. So that's the best part about this. Now, so in order to answer the question of how this season can really help recruiting and vice versa, how it can hurt recruiting, we have to understand that when a program is trending in the right direction, that is going to help you. And when they are trending in the wrong direction, that is going to hurt you. Now, for Syracuse, we can use actually ourselves as an example, we don't have to look around the country. I mean, Florida State would be a good example of this, but we can look right now at our own school. And we're going to use 2018, the year that Syracuse went 10 and 3, and really, truly the last great year for Syracuse football. Hopefully, this season ends up being close to 2018, if not even better. But that was the last big year where Syracuse went 10 and 3. They won a bowl game. It was the third year under Dino Babers. And the Orange looked like they were on the up and up. So let's give their recruiting rankings now. Prior to 2018, during the run, and then after 2018. And you'll notice the trend with Syracuse. Okay? And we're going to use 24-7 sports for these rankings. In 2016, which just so happens to be the first year with Dino Babers, the Orange were 62nd in the country in recruiting, okay? That's where they started with Dino Babers. In 2017, they were 54th. So they went up eight spots, even though they weren't even good. They were four and eight, I think, in 2016. And even in 2017, they were also four and eight. Now, 2018, the year that Syracuse goes 10 and three, the Orange were 51st in recruiting. So already they're knocking on the door for the top 50 And Syracuse capitalized on that. By having a good year in 2018, their 2019 recruiting class was 47th in the country. So when Dino Babers took over in 2016, the Orange were 62nd. And by the time 2019 had finished, even though 2019 was not a good season for Syracuse football, because of the success they had in 2018, In the span of three years, their recruiting ranking jumped by 15 points or teams, whatever you want to call it. But they went from 62nd to 47th in a three-year window. That's a big jump. That's a big jump in recruiting. Now, here is the problem. Here's the problem. We all know what happened after 2018. Obviously, in 2019, they still get a really good recruiting class. That's where they peaked. But 2020. Syracuse goes one in 10. We don't want to speak much about that year. I won't. It was a bad year. Bad year for the program. Wasn't good, right? They were 57th in recruiting. 2021, 60th. So now they're in the 60s again. And by the time you get to 2022, they are 68th in recruiting. So what's the lesson here? Because I, I know I maybe was a little bit, I, I hope I wasn't too confusing for you, but I was, I was throwing out a lot of numbers. The program was trending in the right direction. Their recruiting ranking was going up. They were getting better. 
And then the momentum stopped and they started trending in the wrong direction and the recruiting ranking suffered. So for 2018, or not for 2018, so for 2024, what is the lesson? Obviously, Syracuse can only control how they do on the field for this year. That's obviously the only thing that they control. But by having a good year this year and telling you guys what their recruiting rankings were before playing it down, ever heard of flips? Ever heard of recruits flipping? You probably have, right? It's fairly common where players will flip their commitments. Now, I don't have names necessarily of who Syracuse can get to flip to them. But my point is, is that if you continue or if they continue to have a strong season, come the early signing period on December 4th, they could get a number of players to flip over to Syracuse. We're seeing that with a guy like Javion Hilson, who we talked about off the top. I'm not guaranteeing that Javion Hilson is going to sign with Syracuse on December 4th. Okay, there are plenty of other schools that are interested in him. But even if it's not Javion Hilson, it could be someone that Syracuse was targeting earlier that didn't pick them. But hey, the program looks like it's doing well. Maybe they were a little bit skeptical, and now you don't have to be as much anymore because you have a big season in 2024. So having a big year in 2024 will help recruiting tremendously. But it's not just 2024. It's not just 2024. It's beyond that. I told you. I gave you the rankings of recruiting. They were trending upwards. And then they fell back down because they started losing. So you have to also build sustained success. That means they also need to have a good year in 2025 and in 2026 and in 2027. You get the idea, right? It goes back to the, hey, if your program is training in the right direction, if they're winning, you're going to get players to come. And it's the other way around too, where if your program is trending in the wrong direction and you're losing, players aren't going to come. It's pretty simple, right? So it's not just 2024, but for 2024 purposes, you can get players to flip into the following year's class if you have a big season this year. And it also works for the transfer portal as well. We're seeing some of the top transfers like Kyle McCord and Fidel Diggs have really, really strong start to the years. So when the transfer portal opens up again this season, Syracuse can point at those guys and be like, hey, hey, transfers, look, look what Fidel Diggs did. Look what Kyle McCord did. Look what Clarence Lewis did. He became a starting corner for us. You can sell kids that in the transfer portal as well. So recruiting-wise, transfer portal-wise, 2024 is such a big year for Syracuse football. And I'm so happy that they are off to such a strong start because that means it's going to translate to strong recruiting and it's going to translate to strong transfer portal classes. And hopefully they can continue beyond 2024 to keep the trend going forward. Does that make sense? So once again, Syracuse in the running for a five-star edge rusher in the class of 2025. We just talked about how 2024 can really help recruiting also beyond 2024 as well. 